A new Medical Professions Act deemed a priority and is expected to complement plans for a new hospital. Congratulations to the SMA, the alma mater of this year's A-Level Island Scholar, and the decision to eliminate roaming charges within the OECS territories in 2016. I'm Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details coming up. Topping the news, the new Medical Professions Act, uh, which calls for a high standard of service from health workers, is on top of the Ministry of Health's agenda. Idona John Baptist has more. When the act takes effect, it would require several administrative and behavioral changes within the country's healthcare system. The Ministry of Health has been responsible for drafting the proposed regulations. Subtle changes like um, shifting from the name of the medical board to the medical council and, and it would hold medical professionals more accountable and be able to guarantee the public that persons who offer medical services will be held to that level of responsibility and have to provide adequate responsible care and be answerable for their actions. Also, it would really be looking very closely at guaranteeing the Dominican public and anyone else who makes use of our health services here that the services will be at a certain standard. There will be some level of uniformity across the board. So, of course, particular reference here being made to criteria for registration, licensing. Dr. Christmas wants the public to rest assured that efforts are ongoing to have the measures put before Parliament. And this has been something that has been many years in the making. It has been reviewed extensively by um, healthcare professionals, members from other allied services and other institutions and uh, stakeholders, really, for want of a better word. And uh, in addition, the legal practitioners have had some very close um, looks at the content of that new medical act to ensure that it covers most of the changes that would be required from the now antiquated um, and existing medical act which we use. Very soon we're going to have this new act completed. In other news now a new hospital is still a priority as architects are making a pr preparations to submit final designs to government. Government now has its eyes set on a 2016 groundbreaking date for the project. It will cost 40 U.S. million dollars to construct a new hospital at the existing Princess Margaret Hospital site in Goodwill. Health Minister Dr. Kenneth Daru told a news conference on Thursday that government will go ahead with the project despite the state of affairs caused by Tropical Storm Erica's impact. And it has been suggested, even stated that, you know, right now we're going to have a whole redirecting and, and all of these of resources. But we think that uh, the new hospital is important enough to go ahead with it. I would have also um, stated um, a few months ago that the quote-unquote the quote -unquote delay of the, the construction of PMH rests fairly on my shoulder because um, when, when, when I took over the range as a Minister of Health, we felt that there were, that there were certain um, modifications, certain additions, certain new things that I felt was imperative that be part of the designs and structure of the other new hospital. Chinese designers had to go back to the drawing board with the initial design for the project, following recommendations by Daru for additional sections, including an infectious control unit. Now that we finally am um, settled and design um, settled and signed off on the on the designs, that they have assured us, as I said earlier, that by later this year or, or January they would have the, the ground break it down. Meaning that the designs would have been completed and 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 signed over on our part. The Pan American Health Organization has also been instrumental in reviewing the designs for the new hospital through the United Nations Office for Project Services. Daru says restructuring of the management of the hospital is being looked at. And we think that um, the current um, structure at the PMH really has to be reviewed. In fact, it is being reviewed. And at a bilateral, well, one on one meeting with the director, it really, this is one of the concerns that I raised to her. And we are looking seriously that we're not just we're going to have a new structure, a new building, new equipment. We are going to also have a, a new administrative um, um, layout, a structure at PMH. And as I said, power was committed into into helping us. Help. We, we we are thinking along the lines of, of of employing what they call a chief executive officer of the hospital, who doesn't necessarily have to be a medical doctor, who would be responsible for overseeing the whole ad hospital administration. 
More top stories now. A former St. Mary's Academy student has been described, uh, dis declared, I should say, a level island scholar. Andrea Louis has more. The announcement was made at a press conference on Thursday to reveal the names of the top three students who wrote the A-level exam earlier this year. The A-level program has been offered at the Sixth Form College before, that's prior to the Dominica State College and the Associate's degree. O'Neill Edmund LeBlanc, Chemistry, A, Mathematics, B, Physics, B, and general paper B. Desilene Vidal, biology B, chemistry B, physics C, and the general paper B. And third, Chase Kervona Lawrence, mathematics B, physics D, computer science C, and the general paper, C. Lebla, who plans to pursue engineering, says the A-level program is extremely beneficial to students. In my humble opinion, the A-levels are more challenging and require greater problem-solving skills. In the A-levels, one does not simply answer a question. One observes, analyzes, and plots the best course of action to tackle a problem something that is useful in both education and life. I would like to encourage the DSC to consider separating the A-level program from the associate degree, allowing students a choice to do one or the other and still attain graduation status at this college. I say so because doing both programs is rather daunting and may deter good prospective students. Daislin Vidal, former student of the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, who wants a future in medicine, says the A-level program is a stepping stone for students. In applying for universities and so on, you will see that, um, yes, they do take the SSA degree and if you transfer and so on. But the A-level examination is internationally recognized. So different um, institutions, different colleges, universities, they always ask, they always at least GCE and so on as an option as an examination. If, for example, you home school or even if you went to school. So it's internationally recognized and it will take you really far if you have good results. The A-level program offers subjects in the natural sciences of mathematics, biology, chemistry, physics, computer science, and general paper. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. And Prime Minister Skerritt says Cabinet and the Public Service are relentless in trying to identify sources of financing, the massive rebuilding effort needed to restore economic growth and prosperity to Dominica. In his independence address, Prime Minister Skerritt says the trail of destruction and loss of lives left behind by Erica triggered a shifting of the gear in our independence celebrations. He says as Dominica celebrates 37 years of independence, it was necessary to scale down the customary packed program of activities. He says part of the reason for that is the need to respond to the pain and suffering of Petit Savan, Good Hope, Koliho, Kulibistri and Bath Estate. He says this was seen as a greater priority than the cultural events and competitions that are a normal feature of independence. The Prime Minister added that this year's decision to cut back should not trivialize the importance of the cultural events associated with independence. He said at age 37, Dominica was responsible enough to prioritize and make practical decisions when it is needed. He says the country was also obligated to redirect resources to reconnect communities and to deal with devastation left behind in communities like Koliho and Kulibistri. Mr. Skerritt says we had no choice but to embrace the theme Rebuilding Dominica Together for this year's independence celebrations. In other developments, some progress on a $1.2 million project to construct a temporary bridge connecting Buitica to Delis. During the passage of Storm America, the bridge connecting these two communities was washed away by debris. The government of Dominica has for the past few weeks held consultations with engineers to see how best to rectify this issue of access for people from these communities. The NSG West Indies Limited, based in Barbados, carried across bridging equipment from St. Vincent to construct four Bailey bridges at Point Round, Mukushri, Batali and Buitica. Buitica is the last one on the list. Construction started over the weekend in terms of mobilization. The equipment is there as of today and um, the work has, has started. So above the gorge, we, we're going to put a, a bailey bridge, a temporary bailey bridge, 
Um, we expect that project to be completed within um, four to five weeks. And during that time, we expect the, 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 the Boedeca and Dillis area will have access to the rest of Dominica. The minister says while construction continues, individuals can continue using the paths that have been assigned. We have done a zip line, which is getting materials back and forth over the gorge. We also do a, a, a bypass road, but it's for, only for pedestrians, for persons to, to walk across. Parliamentary representative for the constituency, Peter Saint-Jean, has cautioned people that there will be restrictions on the project site to ensure works are done effectively. You are watching Channel 5 News coming up, an independence message from the parliamentary opposition and Venezuela's commitment to Dominica's post-Erica restoration efforts. A decision to eliminate roaming charges within the OECS territories will be made in 2016. Andrea Louis has more on that story. The Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, ECTEL, held a meeting recently where the possibility of eradicating roaming fees among OECS countries was discussed. ECTEL is a regulatory body for telecommunications in its member states of Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, Dominica and St. Kitts and Nevis. The ECTEL Council of Ministers, we are looking very much closely at the possibility to totally eliminate roaming charges within the OECS territories. And that is very important. Just this week, a news item came out that countries within the European Union, they are looking to have roaming rates totally eliminated by 2017. In wireless telecommunications, traditional roaming is a general term referring to the ability for a cellular customer to automatically make and receive voice calls, send and receive data, or access other services when traveling outside the geographical coverage area of the home network by means of using a visited network. You, the consumers, will be able to save tremendously when you travel within countries, within territories. because. It is, you can, well, you can well anticipate the high costs that are associated with downloading a file, with opening an email, with making a call, receiving a call when you travel out of Dominica just there to St. Lucia or to Antigua. So we are looking closely as the Council of Ministers of Ectel to look at the possibility of eliminating roaming rates within the region. And we have already engaged a consultant on that and we have received some information and hopefully by 2016 we will be taking a final decision in that regard. The OECS territories also include Antigua and Barbuda as well as the British overseas countries and the territories of Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands and Montserrat. And in his independence message, the leader of the parliamentary opposition, Lennox Linton, says the adversities of Tropical Storm Erica present a national reconstruction challenge to create social transformation. The UWP leader called for a new vision of hope inspired by a national commitment that we can use Erica as a platform for effective development cooperation. Mr. Linton called for a commitment to rebuilding Dominica and prioritizing the resettlement of the evacuated residents of Petit Savan and Dubic and those in other affected communities whose homes were destroyed. The UWP leader said Tropical Storm Erica had left us a difficult task to rebuild, but we were a resilient people designed to persevere and triumph against all odds. He had also called for strengthening democracy in government institutions and civil society organizations. And the government of Dominica will soon receive assistance from the Venezuelan army to rebuild roads severely affected by Tropical Storm Erica. Three engineers from the Venezuelan army came to Dominica Friday to conduct assessments of the infrastructure of the most affected areas. The engineers have visited the airport Lubia, Tubagatel and the west and east coasts. Minister for Public Works and Port says this week they were in the process of putting together a preliminary assessment of their findings. And after that, we expect a team from Venezuela, from the, from the army, to come down to Dominica to actually start doing actual work in Dominica after um, uh, Tropical Storm America. Basically, we're going to have a discussion with them to discuss what, in terms of what area they'll be, they'll be looking at. If it's the airport, if it's the east coast, the west coast, the, 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 the south from um, uh, Lubia to Pilit Savan. So we'll have a discussion with them. But uh, a team, you know, after the discussion and what we've decided, a team from Venezuela, from Amicor, will be coming down to Dominica to do, start doing actual works. 
The minister also gave an update on the status of the West Bridge on Great George Street. The, the West Bridge in, in, in Roseau, you know, was compromised after Tropical Storm Erica. And what we are doing now, we have, the West Bridge has to be replaced anyway under the, the Rose Enhancement Project. But what has happened that um, because of Tropical Storm Erica, there was um, some damage caused to the bridge. And so the design is, is, is happening as we speak. So as soon as the designs are complete, we are looking at constructing the, the West Bridge. I can't give a date as to when we're going to start construction. You know, Tropical Storm Erica has, has basically changed a lot, of, a lot of things because under the rules announcement, the first thing that we were thinking of doing is the, the West Bridge and Independence Street. Um, uh, you know, in terms of Tropical Storm Erica, the, I cannot give an exact date as to when we're going to start construction of the West Bridge, but I can tell you that the, the design... The minister says although some of the funding will come from government, they will be seeking additional funds from friendly governments. General Manager of Lyme anticipates that a $10,000 donation to the Grotto Home will fast-track the new home at Bellevue Roll. Jeffrey Baptiste was speaking at the corporation's annual Mission Day luncheon at the homeless shelter. The Mission Day themed Random Act of Kindness featured a luncheon with the 42 residents of the home. Baptiste told people attending the ceremony that the corporation was focused on building people and transforming lives within the community. Very often we forget our citizens were challenged. Uh, the residents of the Grotto Home, I'm quite sure at one point in their lives would have contributed to, to the development of this community in some shape or form. And I think as, as citizens of this country and corporate entities like LIME, we have an obligation in my mind to continue to support and to really motivate the, the, the challenged citizens of our community. Mr. Baptist says he hopes that the contribution made Thursday will assist in the completion of the project to build a new homeless shelter which began four years ago at Bellevue Roll. While significant progress has been achieved, I do not know that they can be satisfied with where they, they have gotten so far. The expectation was they would have moved into that facility several years ago, but that really has not happened. It has not happened because they've been challenged by, in, with respect to raising the necessary funds to get the project to completion. Um, we thought about it and we felt that if we're going to be here today, feeding the residents is a good move. Uh, I think for two hours it will motivate and enlighten them. But I think what we do has to be a bit more sustainable. President of the Board of Directors of the Grotto Home Inns with Irish expressed his gratitude to Lyme for their consistent assistance during the independence season. And in tourism, Dominica will welcome two new, new cruise ships within the first two weeks of November. The MV Britannia will dock at the Rosa cruise ship berth on Wednesday, November 4, that's Community Service Day. On November 10, the MV Mineshift 3 is also scheduled to dock in Roseau. They are among nine inaugural cruise ship calls he expected for the 2015-2016 cruise season. Everybody calls here except perhaps Disney, uh, simply because they're very large ships and they, they don't normally come to destinations like Dominica. So we have um, great success in having the ships come here. We also see repeats um, arrivals from these various cruise lines, including um, the ones that have been coming from the very beginning. In fact, we have bookings for 2016, 2017, and if my memory serves me right, possibly into 2018. And that's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. We start off with football, where the Dominica Football Association has distributed over $6,000 in checks to footballers affected by Tropical Storm Erica. At a press conference on Thursday, the association formally donated a total of $6,500. The Petit Savan Relief Committee received $3,000, while the Petit Savan football team got a check of $2,000. Colibistry footballers Omar and Lamar Philip got $500 each and Davidson James of Foncole received $500. Meantime, the Grenada Football Association contributed $4,000 to the Dominica Football Association in aid of football-related loss post-Tropical Storm Erica. In addition to that, gate tickets at the opening of the 2015-2016 DFA Premier League amassed to $1,500 and the association saw it fit to donate double that amount in aid of recovery efforts for the Petit Savan people. I would like on behalf of the Petit Savan Resettlement Committee and the residents of Petit Savan to say thank you to the Dominica Football Association for this kind contribution. 
Um, we assure you that the contribution will go a long way to ensure that our residents, 823 of them, receive the necessary assistance that they deserve. Thank you very much. In more football, Casabru Secondary defeated Pierre Charles Secondary in an under-15 football match with a humiliating 12-1 defeat. The under-17 team also played on their home ground, defeated Pierre Charles Secondary on Wednesday at 6-0. Other victories that day went to the Isaiah Thomas Secondary for an under-17 match where they battled Northeast Comprehensive to a 5-2 score. The St. Mary's Academy pounded Goodwill Secondary for a 2-1 win, win in an under-17 clash. On the field now for cricket, the fate of suspended West Indies cricket coach Phil Simmons to be determined soon. Media reports out of Jamaica suggested that Simmons had been reinstated to his post as head coach of the Windies team. However, CEO of West Indies Cricket Board, Michael Muirhead, neither confirmed nor denied Simmons' reinstatement. In more cricket, West Indies won Sri Lanka Board President's 11 by 43 runs on the duckworth Lewis method on Thursday. The Windies team scored 318 runs all out in 48.4 overs. Brathwaite and Russell contributed a partnership of 202 runs to bring their team to the win. Fernando took three wickets for Sri Lanka, but his team could only amass 103 runs for three in 21 overs. Wraps up our sports package. Join us next time. Well, scattered showers for the next 24 hours. Watch out for landslides and flooding. Your weather report is next. Good evening, Dominica, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marshall Alexander. Again, we begin by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery. What it showed is this area of convection associated with a weak low-level trough affecting the region. Now, taking a look at earlier visible satellite imagery, what it showed multi-layered clouds across the region today and this resulted in mostly cloudy skies across Dominica. Now taking a look at earlier radar imagery and what it indicated, scattered showers across the region during today. Tonight's weather is expected to be mostly cloudy with scattered showers and possible isolated thunderstorms and tomorrow's weather is expected to be partly cloudy to cloudy with some scattered showers. Sea conditions are expected to be slight to moderate in open water with waves peaking near 5 feet. Conditions for the next three days, partly cloudy to cloudy skies, with scattered showers expected on Friday and Saturday, with the possibility of some isolated thunderstorms on Saturday. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides, and falling rocks, you are advised to exercise some caution. An improvement in conditions can be expected by Sunday. Looking at the bigger picture, fair to partly cloudy skies expected across the extreme northern portion of the region, with partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers expected across the central and southern portion of the island chain with the possibility of some thunderstorm activity expected across the extreme southern portion of the chain. Our international cities forecast, clear skies can be expected in New York and Beijing, some thunderstorm activity expected in Miami and Caracas with partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers expected in London. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.01 a.m. and sunset will be at 5.37 p.m. Please remember that we are in the hurricane season. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Join us again next time for another weather broadcast. Have a good night. News the headlines again, a new Medical Professions Act deemed a priority and is expected to complement plans for a new hospital. Congratulations to SMA, the alma mater of this year's A-Level Island Scholar, and a decision to eliminate roaming charges within OECS territories in 2016. Email us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on YouTube. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.